As far back as humans have been able to write stories, we've created heroes. We've built heroic individuals who are larger than life, who help us understand the values of our culture, and who can inspire us to be more than we are. So today, we're going to examine the idea of the hero by looking at the heroic template that comes from classical myth in order to see how it can be used to create better characters for our games. There are certain things that all classical heroes share, whether they be Odysseus, Achilles, Gilgamesh, Sun Wukong, or King Arthur. The first and most obvious is that they are more than we are. They are better than normal mortals in almost every physical way, but they usually have one trait that truly stands out, be it superhuman strength, cunning, agility, or some other such, which they use to overcome challenges that would lay waste to any normal human. But classical heroes also face a struggle that comes with these abilities. The classical hero, being more than a man, tries to bend the universe to their will. But, being less than a god, this task is fundamentally impossible. This is the tragic aspect of heroism that can't be avoided. And this isn't because the hero is necessarily trying to bend the universe to their will for selfish reasons. They could be doing it for the good of mankind, as the Titan Prometheus did. But regardless of motivation, as the hero tries to align the world to how they think it should be, they come to the tragic realization that they cannot, and must face the consequences of this failure. For many of them, this is the moment of character growth. For some, it's the realization that they aren't really made for this world, that their very heroism isolates them and sets them apart from mankind. For others, it's the struggle to face failure for the first time in a life where they've never failed before. Whether this be Achilles weeping with Priam over the body of Hector, and Achilles' realization that no matter what type of barbaric vengeance he enacts, he will never bring Patroclus back. Or Gilgamesh losing the plant that brings immortality, and having to come to peace with what mortality means. Whether it's Prometheus facing the punishment for defying the gods, or Aeneas trying to apologize to Dido in the underworld, only to have her turn away from him in silence. At some time, all classical heroes have to face the fact that they are not gods, and through doing so, grow and become more human. Their failure, though, isn't the failure to have an impact, or even the failure of the larger causes for which they fought. The Achaeans win the Trojan War, Aeneas founds Rome, Prometheus brings fire to mankind. In each case, their victories are universal, but their suffering is personal, and that's a key aspect to the hero. If you look at the most successful comic book writing today, they follow this formula nearly exactly. Batman, Iron Man, Professor X, even Morpheus embodies this to a T. They all believe that they can reshape the world with their particular extraordinary gifts, but they're forced at some point to confront the fact that they can't, at least not alone. They are all isolated by their gifts, and in each case we see them struggle with this failure, and through that struggle grow and become more human. Yet in spite of their failure, they do great good, and in some ways we love them because they fight on despite their failures. So how could we use this in games? Well, first I should say that there are lots of ways to present a hero, and this is only one approach. I wouldn't want to see us just stick to this formula all the time, that would kind of suck, but since it is so clearly a time-tested one, and so clearly one that still resonates with us today, there are things we can learn by looking at how we depart from it. To me, the most telling thing is that in games, we usually simply deliver a hero that really is omnipotent, at least within the context we present them. They could run and gun through anything, and at the end of the game, they've single-handedly saved the world. We often cut out that step where they have to confront failure, where, for all of their power, they have to face the fact that they can't make everything exactly how they want it. The reason for this is fairly straightforward. One of the most common forms of engagement we deliver on in games to this day is the power fantasy. We make the player feel powerful, feel omnipotent. They can slash or shoot their way through a thousand enemies. No one can stand before them. And truth is, this isn't a bad thing. In fact, as this is an interactive media and the player is taking on the role rather than watching it, it's an incredible medium for delivering on exactly that feeling. But because of that, in making these things, we've been afraid to do anything that would make the hero seem less than omnipotent. And I think we've been too timid there. It's often this very confrontation with failure that makes our heroes seem more heroic. It's often their response to those failures that makes them seem even more incredible. One of the most powerful images in Western literature is Achilles standing atop the trenches, unarmed and unarmored, confronting the onrushing Trojan armies, and shouting, shouting from the trench top, in rage and in grief. And the Trojans, looking at this monstrous, terrible man, this man who's willing to fight them all without even a shield or a breastplate, just break, cowed by the rage of this man. Time and again, we have examples of the most powerful feeling coming after the realization that the hero isn't godlike, because as soon as they become just a little bit more human, suddenly you realize how truly impressive their triumphs really are. True, it turns out they aren't gods, but look at the incredible things these mere humans are achieving. 
We don't have to make games where you run and gun less. We don't have to take down fewer monsters or fight fewer foes in order to be this classical hero. And we don't have to deliver less on that feeling of power that playing them gives. Some of the best heroes in games, uh, Snake, the Nameless One, um, Joel from The Last of Us, uh, there's a lot of great heroes, take your pick. They follow this model, and in doing so, give us some of the most memorable, most powerful moments in gaming. It's far from the only way to construct our heroes, but it does serve as a good template from which to start thinking about the heroes we make, and to help us understand that even if we're trying to deliver on a feeling of power, omnipotence in our heroes might not actually be the most powerful feeling. See you next week.